I guess I'm towards the tail end of my my time with Alzheimer's, at least when it comes to Bruce. There are, there are seven stages of Alzheimer's. I would say that judging by Bruce's symptoms, he's definitely in six and moving quite quickly into stage seven, if not already in stage seven, stage seven being the end stage. So I've been through it all and I've seen it all. And it's, uh, I can attest to you, it is, it's not a pleasant place to be uh, at all. I don't think of anything redeeming at all about these last couple of stages. Well, say something. What can I do? I don't know. Get up and go. Okay, I will. Right now. Okay. This is young onset Alzheimer's, which is very distinct from getting Alzheimer's over 65 years because of the sheer quickness that this disease seems to take over. And for, for Bruce and I, he was diagnosed in 2016, probably in stage four. We've gone through these three stages fairly quickly between 16 and now 2021. I'm grateful that my husband is still alive um, because I still have someone to focus on. But the reality is, is that his quality of life is, uh, it's not, it's not apparent at this point in time. He is in the hospital because he was having outbursts that turned to violence. And in the meantime, the disease progresses. And it, it, the best way to describe it is kind of like aging backwards. And right now he's cognitively about three and a half years old, but with the size and strength of, uh, of a 61 year old man who's in really good condition and is about six, two and uh, 240 pounds. So you can see that there's a, a real big disconnect. Bruce and I hid his illness for the first six months and we didn't want to talk about it. We didn't want to acknowledge it. He was worried and traumatized of how guys were going to perceive him on the golf course and whether or not people were going to ignore him. And by the end of it, we found the power to talk about it on our own terms as being the thing that allowed us the most strength. In a lot of cases, families will say, that's my story. And they feel a little bit of relief that it's being recognized how difficult it is because you get nothing but support from the community when you tell the, the true stories of exactly what's going on. They call it ambiguous grief. There's a term for this where you've lost your partner, you lost the love of your life, but they're not really gone. They're still here and there's still someone that you care with, but the connection isn't the same connection that you had at all. So it's, it's very confusing and it's very sad. You getting ready to take Ruby for her walk? Yes. Cool. I'll go. Yeah? Sure. Anything else good for the day? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Once you realize and recognize the disease for what it is, you can see past it and see the human that's still there. And that's kind of where I am hoping to get and give the best care possible um, from the most professional people that are out there. And my job is just to love them as much as I can while I still have them. <laughs>